Ugh. How the fuck are ya? I bet you haven't seen an intro like that before. What I just did there was a hyperlapse. A hyperlapse is when you take a whole bunch of still images or you can take photos or you can take videos. I took videos for this one and I took a whole bunch of videos while keeping your center subject in the same place. And you look like you've done some weird stop motion cool effect. It's called a hyperlapse. You're already learning and we haven't even got into today's video yet. So what is today's video? Last week, I asked you on my Instagram story to ask me some questions that you wanted me to answer. So that's what we'll be doing today, obviously. That's the title of the fucking video. The first question is from High Class Melbourne. And he said, do a burnout in your RX-8. If I did a burnout in my car, Tracy Grimshaw would be at my house faster than you could count to three. So I, I'm not gonna do that. Okay, this is a huge question that has been asked by quite a few of you. What got me into photography? Years ago, when I was about 13, 14 years old, I used to skateboard a lot. And I used to do a lot of longboarding more specifically. And we had a little group. We had a, had a little group of friends that lived near me and we all used to go out and skate together and find different hills and roads to skate down and stuff. And one day we decided to buy a camera because we wanted to document it a bit better or a bit better quality at least. We used to use a flip camera that was pretty much the same size as a phone, but it just literally had a record button and a screen on it. We all decided to get a Nikon D3200, which was my first proper camera that I learned on. For me being 13, 14 years old, that was some pretty fucking high technology. I mean, that was like six or $700. And then over time, we made more skating films and whatnot, which was heaps of fun. And then the team kind of just split apart, like the whole sort of scene itself just sort of split apart. We all sort of started to grow up a bit more. We got into different things and stuff. A lot of my friends at the time got into urban exploration and stuff and I wanted to explore with long exposure photography and whatnot. A lot of my friends got into graffiti and street art so I was sort of doing a mix of those three things and I was just documenting it all. And then really from there I just snowballed into what I'm doing for you guys now. I work with a lot of companies now, I do a lot of paid gigs and I want to start creating content on YouTube which is why I'm doing this now. So I guess it's been a, a a pretty exponential progression from when I first started filming on a flip camera to where I am now. This one's a really good question. What is one thing you wish you knew before starting photography? And I've got a really good one for this. I wish I knew the difference between having a good lens and a shit body versus a shit lens and a good body. You could have the best camera in the world. Like you could have like a $100,000 camera, it could do all the, the functionality that you wanted to. It could be like, Wow, 50 megapixel, wow, and all that kind of shit, right? But if you've got a shit lens, your quality is just gonna be, and yeah, I fucking, no one told me that when I started. <laughs> so my first full frame camera was a Nikon D810. So after my D3200, I was like, nah, fuck this. I love photography, I'm going all out. I'm buying a full frame camera and I got a Nikon D810 after that. Having a good bit of glass, on your camera is so much more important than having just a good camera. Some really good lenses to check out, 24 to 70, 2.8, 16 to 35, 2.8. And I've already said this, I've said it again, the 7200 2.8 is probably one of the best lenses on this planet. Anyone disagrees, you can just fuck off right now because it's the truth, they're the best lenses. At the same time, they do cost an arm, a leg, and your left fucking kidney to purchase one, so make sure you are ready to get that investment layered down the track when you're ready to drop that sort of money. Toby Trinth has asked me, wait, hang on, he's asked me, hang on, He's asked me a question in my questions. So I'm asking you guys to ask me a question and he's asked me a question. He's asked me, do I want to see a magic trick? Well, Toby, you've ruined my video for one. Uh, I do want to see a magic trick from you, but do you want to see a magic trick from me? I call this one the fuck off. Are you ready? You see that? I've just fucked off. How cool is that? What AFL team do you follow? I follow a really good team. It's called I Don't Fucking Care. Um, <laughs> it's the best team. Everyone should follow that team. <laughs> is photography your main source of income? Yes, it is, to answer your question. I do photography full time as a job, seven days a week. 90% of my life is creating content, doing photography jobs for other people, and where I work full time anyway. Yeah, it is my main source of income. Do you shoot underexposed? Yes, yes, always shoot underexposed. I shoot underexposed because when you take the photo into editing, it's easier to bring back shadows than it is highlight. Once you blow out your highlights in an image, forget about it, they're fucking gone. I mean, you can take it back to an extent, but look at this photo, for example. 
I went on a helicopter ride in Sydney and I was so excited. This is probably like the second time I've ever been in a helicopter and I got the front seat. I got upgraded to the front seat for free. And I was freaking out. I'm like, this is the best day ever. And I didn't even check my camera settings and I shot the whole flight underexposed. Like I really fucked myself on that one. Thank God to editing, I made the photo go from that to this. So I pretty much boosted it three stops in editing. Like pretty much my camera was still able to preserve all the detail in the shot. This doesn't mean that you should shoot everything underexposed. I only shoot half a stop or maybe a full stop under what my light meter is already telling me. You should never really go any further than that unless you make a mistake like I did in the helicopter. The reason I do that is because I don't want to risk losing the highlights at all. Okay, I fucked up. I fucked up badly. I went to go uh, eat some food real quick, so I turned off my mic and I pretty much answered like five or six questions without my microphone even being on. Fuck! What took me so long to switch from Nikon? My old camera, which was a Nikon D810. I had that camera for about three or four years and it was at the end of its life. It was on its last legs. Uh, the shutter count would have been upwards of 200,000. Like that's, I, I, I run that camera into the ground. But when the Mark III came out, it was the camera for me. And it made sense for me to make the switch over to it as well because I had an in with someone in Sony that could get me discounted prices. So by the time I sold all my Nikon stuff and paid off the Sony stuff that I just bought, I actually broke even on the switch. So it made sense for me to do it. That's the reasoning behind why I'm on Sony now. Why do I doubt my work and has this ever happened to me? First of all, if you are doubting your own work and how to get around it, if you're sort of, if you're on a block, if you're in a mindset, if you've got a, a writer's block, as they say, the best way to get around it is stop doing whatever you're trying to do. Not stop like completely like, okay, that's it. I'm gonna put my camera away. I'm never going back to it again. No. The best way to get around it is to refresh your mind. And a really good way to do that is to go out and do something else that isn't whatever you were doing. You need to escape from whatever it is that you were doing to restart your creative juices and to get you out of this situation. There are a couple of things that I like to do personally. It'll always be different for you, but for me, I, I love to go for a skate. I think that when I'm skating, I can only skate. Like if I'm trying to land a trick or if I'm trying to bomb down a hill, I can only do that. It's not like I'm gonna fucking whip out my computer and start editing going 60 Ks down a hill, mate. Nah, that's not, that's not how it works. If you're trying to think of new ideas or if you're trying to go out and shoot something new or do something in regards to Instagram or whatever the fuck it is you're trying to do. Maybe you are skating, maybe you are trying to land a trick. Stop skating for an, for an hour, for a day, for a week, for a month, however long that you need. Go and do something else and then come back to it. It pretty much helps restart and refresh your mind to help get your creative juices flowing again. But you can take as many of those steps as you like. You can stretch for as many hours a day, but when it actually comes down to getting shit done, to getting your work done, you have to make sure that you cut out your distractions because a lot of people procrastinate. So what you do is you get rid of that, well not get rid of it, but make it as hard as possible to do the thing that you wanna distract yourself with. For example, after I finish filming this, I should get to editing it and make sure I have the video, or at least have a draft done by tonight. So over the next couple of days I can refine it and then it's ready to post. But I also really wanna play Xbox. <laughs> So what I'm gonna do is after I finish filming this video, I'm gonna unplug my Xbox and put the cord somewhere really inconvenient for myself. That way it tells my mind, Mike, it's just easier to edit the fucking video than trying to find your cord, go back there, plug it in, sit down and start gaming. Make your distractions harder to do than the work itself. That's a really good tip. So that pretty much answers most of your questions. I didn't get around to everyone. I, I was completely flooded with questions. I will be doing more of these Q and A videos. I love answering your questions. I wanna know what you guys are thinking. Leave a comment. Let me know what you wanna hear next. Hey guys, just to let you know real quick before I finish off this video, I'm giving away these two prints. Let me show you. This one and... Okay, so... Ah, Fuck off. So I'm giving away these two prints and all you have to do to enter to win one is subscribe to my channel. If you've already subscribed to my channel, that means you're already in the running to win one of these prints. It literally takes one fucking second, mate. If you haven't done it, it's a big red button on your screen called subscribe. If you press that button, you're in the running to win free shit. <laughs>